The day we're taking a look at these MLB matches, which are happening on Saturday, April 8, 2023, and giving you our team and total picks for today. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and to push the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also check out our Patreon if you want access to our premium picks. Our Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money, and if you are interested in props and parlay picks, check out our new channel High Stakes Props and Parlays, where you can find our player props and parlay picks predictions. You will find the link to our Patreon and to our new channel in the description and comment section below. Houston Astros vs Minnesota Twins Despite a tough start against the Astros in his only appearance against them lifetime, I like Ryan at home in this game. Ryan had a solid 3.03 at home last season and was the Twins' most consistent pitcher throughout the season. He picked right up where he left off in Game 1 of this season after allowing just three hits and a win over the Royals. The Astros' lineup has struggled without Altuve at the top of the order to be a catalyst for the likes of Bregman and Pina. Those two in particular are off to slow starts and Ryan should be able to exploit their struggles. Garcia finished poorly last season and started slowly this year as well, while taking the loss to the White Sox. Garcia is likely in danger of losing his spot in the rotation when the Astros get some of their injured arms back. Take the Twins with a money line. While Garcia wasn't fantastic in his season debut, he has performed very well against the Twins in his career. The right-hander has limited Minnesota to a point 196 slash point 237 slash point 268 slash line over 56 at-bats. Only three of those 56 at-bats were extra base hits, with none of them being home runs. I think the 26-year-old will bounce back with a solid start against a team that he's found success against. With that being said, I'll also lock in the under in this one. We should be in for a pitcher's duel between two offenses that have frankly been in the bottom third of the league in production. Furthermore, the Twins' bullpen has been great, sitting at 9th in ERA, 2.91, and 4th in WIP, 1.02. Let's sit back and root for pitching and defense in this game give me the under 7.5 goals. Cincinnati Reds vs Philadelphia Phillies. The Reds are enjoying an encouraging opening to their season. They won the first series against the Pirates and split with the Cubs this week. The Phillies are off to a disastrous start to their season, winning just two of seven games and have been unable to generate runs consistently. They are playing without Bryce Harper which doesn't help matters. Furthermore, Red starter Nick Lodolo was quietly one of the better rookie pitchers last season. He posted a solid 3.66 ERA. Lodolo contained the Phillies, conceding only four runs and 12.1 innings. The Phillies' bullpen has been known to be a disaster in recent seasons, and this year has been no different, ranking second last in the major leagues. Our team pick is Cincinnati Reds. The pitching duel between these two clubs will be fascinating as a low-scoring game is expected. The offenses have struggled to string together two great games in a row for either side. I would side with the under in this late afternoon matchup. The under is 3-0 to 1 in the Reds' last four road games, with the total set at 7.0 to 8.5. Take the under on Saturday. Kansas City Royals vs San Francisco Giants. I'm choosing to believe in San Francisco's streak of offensive dominance every other game. It's a weird thing very early in the season, but baseball is a weird sport. On a serious note, I can't see the Royals winning consecutive games frequently this season, especially not with the way their offense has performed on most nights. They haven't won two straight yet. Even if Singer has another terrific start, he's handing the ball over to a suspect bullpen. Roll with the Giants at home here. Our team pick is San Francisco Giants minus 1.5 goals. In the series opener these two mustered a total of four runs. Neither offense should strike fear into a pitching staff, even in the face of the Giants having a couple of big games as the plate already. San Francisco has been shut out twice already and was held to just one run on Friday. The Royals have been shut out three times already and have averaged just 2.5 runs per game. Their offense, from a batting average standpoint, is the worst in the game currently, and Mania will be looking to take advantage. Kansas City's pitching should also not be discounted at their point, especially their starters who continue to work deeper into games. The most runs the Royals have allowed in any game this season was seven. Take the under eight runs. Texas Rangers vs Chicago Cubs. The Cubs will send left-handed Justin Steele to the hill for his second start of the year. 
He struck out eight batters in six scoreless innings Saturday against the Brewers, walking one and allowing three hits. Chicago failed to offer any run support, and he was left with a no decision. Steele finished last season in a strong way with a 3.180 RA and 24 starts, and his first outing of 2023 indicates more where that came from. Last Saturday's outing stands as one of the best of his young career, as only once last season did he throw six shutout innings also against the Brewers. Steele will look to have another strong start against the Rangers, and the Cubs must love what they have seen out of him towards the end of last year and the start of this one. Chicago is off to a strong start at the plate, averaging over 5.50 runs per game. That comes with a caveat, as they have had offensive explosions to the tune of 12 and 15 runs in a handful of games against the Cincinnati Reds. They have a good chance to keep up the runs against the Rangers in this game. Young Cubs lefty Justin Steele put together a stellar effort in his season debut, scattering three hits and one walk over six scoreless innings against a strong Brewers lineup. According to Yahoo.com, he generated 14 swinging strikes, including eight on his slider alone, and he has a good chance to duplicate that effort against a mediocre Rangers lineup. Chicago is off to a strong start at the plate, averaging over 5.50 runs per game. That comes with a caveat, as they have had offensive explosions to the tune of 12 and 15 runs in a handful of games against the Cincinnati Reds. I think they will muster enough offense and generate some run support for Steele. Take the Cubs to hop on Paris early and come out with a win. Take Chicago to win. The Rangers and Cubs are both off to a promising start at the plate to open the year, but it is far too early to make any conclusions about both offenses. The Rangers are slated to send lefty Martin Perez to the hill for the second game of this series. Perez delivered a strong start in his first start of the year, a victory over the Phillies, allowing just one run on eight hits over his five-plus innings of work. Although the final line looked good, his velocity dipped, and if he cannot manage that he will get tagged in this game. I expect Perez to get it back and both pitchers to do well in this game. Entering the first game of this series Friday afternoon, the total number has gone under in 5 of 6 between these clubs at Wrigley Field. Take the under. Miami Marlins vs New York Mets. Is this the year that the New York Mets finally don't disappoint? It's far too early to say, but so far the results have been a mixed bag. They started off by winning 3 of 4 in a series against Miami, but then had a disaster set against the Brewers. Going on the road to Milwaukee they got swept, losing the three games by a combined score of 26-6. However, they were able to rebound in the first game of this series with a 9-3 victory. Francisco Linder and Pete Alonso both hit home runs in that one, and Alonso is up to four on the year now. They didn't look great against the Brewers, but the Mets are 4-1 against the Marlins this season. New York will send Kadai Senga to the mound here, and it's hard not to be excited about the 30-year-old rookie from Japan after what he did last week. In his first MLB start, Senga gave up only three hits and one run, while striking out eight. If the Mets make a run this year, he is going to have to be a major part of it. It's always a bit of a wild card when bringing in a player from overseas, but so far the results have been quite encouraging. Senga started off with some nerves and walked a couple of batters right away, but after that he was dominant. He retired 15 of the final 17 batters he faced, which is even more impressive when you consider it was on the road. I am taking New York on the money line here. The Mets have already played five games against the Marlins this year, and they have won four of them. To say that Miami's offense is anemic would be putting it mildly, and they have scored only 11 total runs in those five games against the Mets. Miami starter Trevor Rogers was really good in 2021, but he was terrible last year and was shaky to start off the season. New York is coming off a nine-run outburst where both Francisco Linder and Pete Alonso went deep, and Alonso is up to four homers on the year. Kadai Senga looked great in his MLB debut last week, so I don't think there's any reason to believe the 30-year-old rookie from Japan will struggle here at home against a weak Marlins lineup. Our team pick is Mets. The under also makes a lot of sense in this spot. Miami's offense isn't scaring anybody, and it's not like the Mets have been too hot either. New York has a team ops of just .634, and they got shut out in back-to-back -back games by the Brewers earlier this week. Trevor Rogers wasn't great last year, but he does seem to have Pete Alonso's number as Alonso is 115th, with six strikeouts in his career against him. 
and the Mets rookie from Japan Kadai Senga looked dominant against the same Marlins team last week, racking up eight strikeouts while retiring 15 of the final 17 batters he faced. Miami has played five games against the Mets this season, and they've scored 11 total runs in those five games. Our total pick is under 7.5 runs. Boston Red Sox vs Detroit Tigers Both teams have been underwhelming in the first week of the season, but that's about where the similarities between the teams end. The Red Sox have some premium talent and should be better than what we saw last season, not to mention the first week of the season in 2023. Meanwhile, Detroit's rebuild continues as they have plenty of youth that they are building around in an effort to become relevant again. The Tigers have a bright future if the young guys live up to expectations, but their pitching staff has work to do in order to keep the team afloat. Boston showed that they are capable of putting games in the win column with Thursday's triumph. Look for how to do his part while Boston's bats carry them to a second straight win. While I'm anticipating a Red Sox victory by multiple runs, I don't think the pitching will have much to contribute to the game. Tanner Houck has been a pretty pedestrian arm in his time with Boston, owning a 3.15 career ERA and 1.13 whip. Those are respectable numbers, but he's yet to take a step forward as a truly reliable starter. Houck's also coming off of a mediocre season debut where he allowed three earned runs to the Orioles. On top of the run of the mill starters in this game, neither bullpen has excelled this year. Boston comes in ranked 12th in ERA, 3.31, and 22nd in WHIP, 1.41, while Detroit is 24th, 5.20, and 26th, 1.48, respectively. Despite the Tigers' offense being one of the worst in the league, they'll have an opportunity to put up a few runs Saturday. Let's lock in the over here. Oakland Athletics vs Tampa Bay Rays. Oakland has shown tenacity, but they are still a team that is less talented than pretty much every other team in the majors. The A's will scrap, battle and claw, but they aren't a team that you can rely on to put games in the win column, especially on the road against good teams. Tampa Bay swept the Tigers at home and swept the Nationals on the road ahead of this series. Springs was terrific in his season debut, leaving without allowing a hit through six frames against the Tigers. He should be able to handle what is a mediocre AAA lineup that the A's bring to the field. Give the upper hand to Tampa Bay as the Rays maintain their early season success. Our team pick is Tampa Bay Rays minus 1.5 runs. Although Springs went scoreless in his first start, I do expect Oakland to get at least a run, but I'm taking the over more because of the A's starter and their bullpen which have given up a ton of runs. Tampa Bay may not have a lot of power in their lineup, but they have a lot of contact hitters that can move runners on the bases and string together lopsided innings to help this over cash. So far this season both Tampa Bay and Oakland are 3-2-1 in hitting the over, and both teams have shown they can put up a lopsided number. Finally, in the six games the Rays have played so far, they have gone over 7.54 times, with the average going for 9.5 runs per game, while Oakland's game has gone over 7.53 times, with one other landing on 7, and their games averaging 10.5 runs per game. Take the over 7.5 runs.